begin our solution, we first establish a coordinate system at the lower left corner. And then we number the nodes as 1 and 2 and 3 with the corresponding degrees of freedom. Then we have the standard element coordinate system that Turner used. We are constraining the two nodes at the wall to not move, and that's why when we set up our 6 by 6 set of uh, uh, equations here, we constrain the first two degrees of freedom and the last two, the wall degrees of freedom, and then they have corresponding unknown reactions at this point. Meanwhile, the tip is free to move. It has the, uh, so we don't know the displacements, but we do know there's no horizontal force and there is a minus 1,000 Newton downward force. And so we have a two by two problem that results from this. Really the logic is, if I go through it carefully, that um, these zeros will cancel out column-wise these two columns. These, this zero, this one, and this zero, this. Because post multiplication by a, a component of a vector like this acts column-wise. Then, uh, to eliminate the first couple equations, and the last couple, you really are partitioning out equations. You're not canceling them or forgetting them, but you're merely setting them aside. And then those are used to find the reactions at the end of the problem, if necessary. Finally, we end up with a two by two set of equations, and I copy those uh, in the next figure. So here are our two equations, and if we remember those four components that were zero, they included x1, which occurs in many, many places here, uh, y1, y2, and x3, but uh, we have do the damage pretty much with that x1 being gone here. And as a result, you get the modulus of elasticity occurring on the term here times u3 equal to zero, so that immediately gives you that u3 is zero. That's the um, horizontal motion at the tip of the bracket. The second equation involves the uh, shear modulus term with the uh, coefficient here times u4 equal minus 1,000. And then when you solve for that, you get the negative displacement, the downward displacement of 0 0.00252 millimeters. And this body, this model here, shows only shearing deformation. Uh, it really is, again, going to be too stiff a model um, because we don't allow the bending behavior to occur. So this, this answer is going to be probably substantially low, and I don't treat it as a real solution. It's only an academic solution. Problem five, I'm going to fill in one of the details that I find students in the past have labored upon, and that is to find the remaining terms in the shear stiffness relation that we um, developed for that script E matrix. And uh, the problem is that when you want to find the shearing terms, you have to form a body with shear forces on the outside on all four sides of your candidate rectangle. Then in the exploded view it looks like this. Now there's a bit more trouble interpreting what's happening at a given exploded free body diagram for the reason that there are two unknowns here that we can adjust to bring this into balance with our lumped load idea and yet there are three equations of equilibrium. So let's draw the free body diagram and put the forces on it. We're assuming that the forces can be lumped here that are going to oppose the, the given distributed shear forces on the top and the side. And it's not clear that you can come up with the proper distribution here. Well, if you look at the force equilibration horizontally, it's easy to take this force and set it equal to that and turning that into a couple with a given separation distance. Separation distance depending on the y coordinates. Then you can imagine that this force will balance the one on the left uh, by taking the same values, creating another couple which has a different moment arm here. And so 
then the thought occurs, whoa, is this going to balance out in, in moments or not? And so you use some moments about um, an axis here. Typically you can just take a a point say about which these either of these uh, act take positive uh, clockwise let's say and then you'll get for instance this set of couples here uh, will be this force times that moment arm so you're going to get the x1 x3 minus x1 appearing in the force like term and then the moment arm brings in the y3 minus y1 you look at the other term here with this couple and you'll get the y's appearing in the force part and the x's appearing in the uh, moment arm part and lo and behold they do cancel and so it does work out that you can do that kind of rough lumping of forces and then redistribute those at the midpoint of your proposed finite element then shift those to the corners where the nodes are and all works out well. By doing that same process for the other shear terms and then for the sigma x stress, you will end up with the total equilibrium law that I'll write down here. This is done using the shorthand notion. And this is done for the general coordinate system, by the way, so that we aren't restricted to the special element system used earlier. You could then get the total stiffness from this set of product of terms and again with the hard part being inverting this H matrix but that can be done symbolically nowadays so so this f helps f people who are trying to work out some of the equilibrium ideas for a general element and that completes our problem session